Operation into freedom. So let's get right into it. Okay, so what we want to do is make sure that we recognize uh, the fact that we're going to get frustrated, right? So I'm playing ping pong with my son. Any of you ping pong players out there? So we're in the basement and we're playing ping pong and he's been taking tennis lessons. He's 12. And, uh, and so um, he's been doing really good with tennis. And when we used to play ping pong, he could barely hit the ball back. Well, we started playing yesterday and all of a sudden he was just like amazing like really really good it was freaking me out I'm like how did you go from not being able to do this to running me around the room and it was pretty amazing because um, you know he was doing one thing and it caused him to be good at something else which is something to remember so file that away he's been playing tennis and it caused him to become more effective as a ping-pong player even though the rackets are different you know and how you're playing the game itself is kind of similar, but how you're playing it um, is a little different. And so uh, he was able to translate that over, which is why when you are excelling in one area of your life, you can often take that and, and transfer it to other areas of your life as well. A lot of times people come to me because they think that they have to solve all these problems in their life, and you don't. You just kind of upgrade a, a few of the ways that you're um, handling you know, a couple of problems, and then all the other problems tend to work themselves out on their own. So we were playing and, and, uh, and he was doing really good. So then we, we come back and we play a little bit later and he was missing a lot of shots and he started to get really frustrated. And I said, here's what we're gonna do. Because of course the first thing when your son gets frustrated or your child gets frustrated, or your spouse gets frustrated, the first thing you wanna do is start power breathing. Take those slow power breaths in through your nose down to your belly, slowly exhale and slow down. Because often when others get frustrated, we start to get frustrated with them. And then the worst thing you wanna do is yell at someone to calm down or to not quit being so frustrated or acting that way when you're now joining them, right? Quit getting so mad, you're stressing me out. <laughs> you know, that's not a, that's not a great way to uh, to lead people and take them where you want them to go. So you got to get control first, slow back down, and then lead them. And so what I did was I said, hey, here's what I want you to do. Every time you mess up, I want you to celebrate, right? So every single time you mess up, we're going to go, yeah, and we're going to celebrate, okay? And he, he looked at me, he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, every time we mess up, every time you mess up, every time I mess up, we're going to celebrate. And then he said, okay, and then I messed up the next one. And then I went, yes, awesome, woohoo! And he started laughing, okay? And so then he messed up, and then I looked at him, and he went, yes, and he threw his arms up in the air, right? And then we both started laughing. And I said, let me tell you how I learned this. I said, I got recruited in like 2003 to do these uh, Stop Smoking and Weight Loss seminars where we would tra travel around the country and I, would, I was in charge of the Midwest and, uh, and the East, right? So the East Coast. And so I would travel all around like Indianapolis and then I'd head over to Ohio and then I'd make my way to New York and then we even did one uh, across the border in Canada once. And, uh, but I would travel all around, my wife and I, and we would, do, we would go to all the Holiday Inns, <laughs> you know, and the Ramada Inns and, and we would help big groups of people to stop smoking or lose weight and teach them some of these strategies for how to use hypnosis to make their lives better. And it was a lot of fun and I learned a lot, but I remember um, that the guy's name that recruited me was Donnie Call. And Donnie was from Kentucky and he had this uh, thick Southern jaw. And I remember when we first sat down, he wanted me to watch him in action. And it was quite an experience. And he said, one of the things that, well, let me say it like Donnie. Okay. I'm not going to do a great job, but, but this is what he's, he said. We're sitting down in uh, this hotel, and I remember he orders this big steak dinner, and I don't know if because he wanted it or he was just trying to impress me, but he says, now see here, see here, son. See, your attitude is not going to be determined by what happens in that room over there, see? So if you have a winner and a whole bunch of people show up and you make a ton of money, you go to McDonald's for dinner, okay? No big deal. He says, and the next day, if you go and you got a loser, so you lose a whole bunch of money, you know what you do? You go to dinner at Red Lobster, right? Because Red Lobster, you celebrate, right? You celebrate because you're not going to let what happens in that room determine how you feel. 
And I was like, wow, that's pretty powerful. I never heard that before. I had never heard the, the idea that you can celebrate when things go wrong until I got a little older. Fast forward several years and I started hanging out with more entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs think very different than a lot of people. Entrepreneurs are always thinking in their mind, fail fast, fail first, fail often, right? Fail fast, fail first, fail often because they believe that failure is only feedback. You're just getting feedback on what works and what doesn't, what people like and what they don't like, what will help you move towards your goals and what will keep you from achieving them. And so whenever you get an idea or an impulse to take action, do it and then see what happens, right? So you keep moving forward and then you correct on the fly. So even in a uh, Disney or Pixar's movie, Finding, um, Finding Nemo, right? Dory the fish played by uh, Ellen DeGeneres her voiceover, she said, no matter what, just keep swimming, 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 just keep swimming, swimming, right? She had short-term memory loss, she couldn't remember a lot of things, but the more she felt safe and loved and relaxed, the more she was able to recall what she needed to be able to win the day. And no matter what was going on, she just kept swimming forward. And that's what we do, we keep swimming forward. So then I started interviewing um, very successful people and I'm asking them, what's your secret? And you know, they always said, that there is no secret, they tried everything, trying to figure out how to achieve their goal. If you stop trying to achieve your goal, that's the best way to not get there. So you gotta keep trying, you gotta keep going for it. So I'm telling Aiden this, right? My son Aiden, I'm telling him, you, you gotta keep swimming, you gotta keep moving forward, and that's, you know, when you're not playing good, just keep push on, pushing on and keep practicing, because how do you get better? Through practicing. And then through learning, you know, a couple new tricks and getting some feedback and then adjusting how you're holding the paddle and then trying different moves and then learning how to be patient under pressure. You know, when I'm working with athletes, uh, especially golfers in particular, a lot of golfers will come in and I've had people who usually they're very good. They're like the best player in their club or they're in a championship round or they're in, uh, they're playing professionally or they're um, playing in college. And so when people come to me for sports performance, they're usually already playing at the highest level. And it's almost always they, they're getting frustrated. And when they get frustrated, they start focusing on what they don't want, which is the ball not dropping where they want it to. And so when we are uh, together, one of the big things I'm doing is I'm getting them to feel very relaxed and getting them to play, be playful and to have fun again, instead of having so much pressure on performance, they're having fun and enjoying where they're at and what they're doing. Golf course and you're playing, you know, that's that's really a luxury. <laughs> you know, that really is a gift, even though if you've been working really hard and, and you've been at it all the time, it really is a gift to be able to play at that level, you know, because you're so good and being out on a beautiful golf course and, you know, all these, you know, cool things, the beautiful weather that usually goes with it and everything else. So. What we do is we get people to start having fun, and that's how you turn frustration into freedom. So there's three things there, okay? First of all, you celebrate when it's not going that great because that tells your mind that you're not gonna let the situation determine how you feel, you're gonna determine how you feel. It's not what shows up, it's how you show up, right? It's not what shows up, it's how I show up. That's the important thing. So we're, not, we're gonna determine how we feel in any situation. Step two, we gotta look at failure as feedback. It's just feedback, you're just getting feedback. If the ball doesn't drop the way you want it to, adjust how you're hitting it so that it does. And then step number three is have fun, right? So that you're realizing that what you're doing can be enjoyable, you just gotta be intentional about it and make a game out of it. So there Aiden and I are missing and celebrating and then we're making shots and then we're celebrating and then pretty soon we're just celebrating no matter what we're doing. And it went from being frustrating and, and annoying or angry or getting discouraged or not wanting to play to all of a sudden laughing and kidding around and bouncing around and doing the happy dance and joking with each other. And that's how it is with every situation we go through. Because no matter what situation you're in, you have a choice on how you're gonna show up. 
Now I know that some situations it's tough to look at it as, as feedback. It's tough to, to say, all right, I'm gonna celebrate even though this horrible thing is going on or I'm feeling so stressed out. Maybe celebration isn't the right thing. Maybe it's settling back down and getting into a state of peace or reminding yourself what's most important and focusing on gratitude or taking a step back and just deciding, all right, I'm gonna be intentional in this moment. And that's what makes me strong. That's what gives me confidence. That's what allows me to feel like I'm in control. Even if though I can't control an external situation, I can control how I'm looking at it. And when you do that, magic starts to happen. One, you start to feel a little bit better, feel more secure inside, you feel more hopeful. Two, it releases all kinds of dopamine and peaceful um, emotions and, and uh, neurotransmitters in your mind that allow you to uh, to kind of recover and recuperate or even heal faster. See, a lot of times when things aren't going well, then we make it worse by our commentary about it. And then as a result, we fill our body with cortisol, which increases inflammation and just makes everything else feel worse. So if you're constantly feeling like crap, or you're constantly feeling sick or unhealthy, you know, a big part of it is our emotional state and what we're focusing on and what we're telling ourselves on a regular basis. And if you can adjust that, right, then you're gonna start to feel more peaceful. Now, a lot of times it is hard to do that on your own. I mean, that's why I've always had a coach in my life where I've surrounded myself around other people that um, understand or relate because then I can call somebody up and say, hey, I'm having a hard time right now. Hey, I'm struggling right now. Hey, I, I need a little pep talk or a reframe or some help, <laughs> right? And I always have, somebody that I can call, usually a few people that I can call. And if I don't have anybody that I can call that, that uh, are just in my peer group, then I'll call a coach or I'll hire someone new. Because the, you know, I don't wanna waste any emotions, any um, unnecessary suffering, any anguish, any time or any money on um, feeling bad or feeling scared. You know, I, if there's people out there, and there are, that can help me to overcome that, to shorten my learning curve, to feel more safe, to get back on track so I'm making progress again, it always saves me money, it saves me time, it saves me effort, it saves me emotions, right? It saves me in so many ways. And a lot of people don't do that. Entrepreneurs, the entrepreneurs do though, they're always hiring coaches or going to classes or seminars. I am actually heading off to a seminar at the end of this month. Um, Funnel Hacking Live. It'll be my third or fourth time hanging out with about 5,000 other entrepreneurs and Tony Robbins will be there and a bunch of other wonderful people and everybody's sharing and kind and supportive of one another and you go there and you just get filled up, right? And then you look for partnerships with other people who have skill sets that um, maybe they're stronger in a certain area than you are. And like for me, you know, I'm a good teacher, but I'm not a good web designer, <laughs> right? Every time I lay out my own pages, even if they're just templates, people are like, that looks like it's from the 90s. <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, the information's good, but can you make it look pretty? Or can you make it move around and do things so it looks like it's in this, this century? Uh, Cause that's not my strength, right? And for a long time, I tried to do it all by myself. In fact, I used to say this, and I used to hear a lot of other people say it too, well, I still do hear a lot of people say this. They'll say, uh, well, I'm so mad at myself. I should be able to get it done all on my own. I should be able to do this myself. I'm smart enough. It has nothing to do with being smart. It has to do with where are your superpowers? Are your superpowers for this? You know, like if my car breaks down, I'm gonna go and uh, go to a mechanic, someone who specializes in this, someone who does it all the time, because then it'll get done, it'll get done right. And even if I have to spend money, I'm gonna save money by not wasting countless hours trying to figure it out on my own and it's gonna get done right, right? And it'll get done better than I could have done it by myself. And so um, when people come to me, I'm a mind mechanic, right? They come to me because um, I'll be able to help shift their beliefs and help them feel stronger and more confident and feel more empowered faster than, than uh, doing it on your own. And so it's very valuable doing it that way. And of course, um, you know, if money's really tight and you can't afford a, a coach at this time, then you go get their programs or you listen to their podcast or you um, watch all their videos online or go to their YouTube channel or read their newsletters or go to their blog. 
because most coaches are telling you they're really good they're giving you all their best secrets and information and strategies already through all their online material right and so you can go soak it all up and then uh, um, and then maybe just hire them to do one power session one focus laser power session to help you because you've already developed the foundation on your own through their materials okay so these are some simple ways Ooh, sorry the camera's so bouncy <laughs> these are some uh, simple ways to turn frustration into freedom so I want you to use that reverse psychology trick if you are having a tough time with something celebrate it right if you're feeling stuck go yeah I'm feeling stuck and do a happy dance and bounce around yeah <laughs> right it can it's a pattern interrupt it confuses your brain and like no I'm supposed to be in dread right now I'm supposed to be feeling stewing in anxiety I'm supposed to be scared and focusing on all these bad things happening why how's that helping you for most people it's not you know some people might say well it, it motivates me and I get mad at myself and I beat up on myself and then I use it to charge forward that's a horrible motivational strategy I used to do that too and it was terrible because what happens is you have to feel horrible every time you want to get motivated and then after a while you don't want to feel horrible so guess what you're not getting motivated so it's a terrible strategy instead of using only pain to motivate you I'm a big fan of using pleasure to motivate you so we're not just trying to avoid the pain of, of failure we are chasing the pleasure of growth success learning and trying to you know push through those challenges so that we can become even uh, better at who we are right and living our our fullest potential and the only way to do that is by pushing through these challenges right by going through the tough stuff that's what grows us that's what makes us stronger and so you've got to make sure that that if you're having a tough time good that's an opportunity celebrate it and then put some of these techniques into action and you're gonna find yourself suddenly feeling better suddenly feeling more hopeful and then as you start moving forward, you're going to start to have new ideas, new insights, new awareness that's going to help you to be able to um, start making some progress in a big way. So anyway, I hope this helps. Thanks so much for uh, listening. And uh, if you need um, some help with this, then definitely check out um, the resources that we have, the blog that I have, sign up if you're not subscribed to the How to Be Mesmerizing podcast where I'm providing all this free training all the time, then make sure you go to um, mesmerizingpodcast.com, mesmerizingpodcast.com. And when you do that, you're going to find all kinds of free training and insights and strategies that took me 31 years to learn. And so they're all there, right? And then when you're ready to speed up your results, then you can join one of our group classes or you can enroll in one of our um, more cost-effective uh, coaching programs like the... Uh, prosperity mindset program or prosperity health it's done I just haven't released it yet to the general public it's only available to the people who um, signed up for the prosperity mindset and then got the other courses in advance so they are in it and working on prosperity health and creating more energy so um, so if you're interested in that you can check those things out and if you need anything else just uh, private message me and we'll go from there all right so if you like this episode please share it like it and uh, and um, and use it, right? Apply what you're learning and make your life a sure success. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Bye.